everyone so i'm done with my uni classes for the year i am officially off in my summer break i'm so happy but i actually don't have that many content ideas so i thought why don't incorporate some of the stuff that i've learned throughout the year so today we'll be talking about single cell sequencing especially in rna i actually had to do a whole project for this a few weeks ago it was for biochemistry and i actually found it really interesting we got to choose our topics so i chose single cell sequencing because it sounded really interesting to me and i got to learn so much from it and do a whole presentation for it but anyways today we're going to be talking about single cell sequencing and it's actually really applicable because it's very recent and very new technique i think that everyone should be at least aware of single cell sequencing as well as other biochemistry techniques as they're the future for cancer research cancer treatments personalized medicine and cures so yeah i'll just be talking about single cell sequencing today i hope you guys enjoy but yeah basically to jump right into it single cell sequencing measures genetic material very thoroughly and it analyzes genetic material at an isolated level so it examines heterogeneity and like gene expression at a very cellular level and one of the great advantages from single cell sequencing is it can define heterogeneity and when we talk about heterogeneity that's like variability within cells so if you let's say you have two rna sequences and they have different genes but they still code for the same disease or condition we can determine the cause of this disease using single cell sequencing as we're able to look at two different rna codes and say well they have these similar biomarkers so we're able to incorporate that into silencing that gene on that specific RNA sequence specifically. And also a really big perk of single cell sequencing over let's say bulk sequencing is, well, bulk sequencing looks at a sample as a whole. So it's like the broader trends or the general purpose. Single cell sequencing are the individual component. So it compares specific sequences. So if we were to break this down, bulk RNA shows a very general overview of let's say an organ or tissue where the single cell sequencing is able to determine let's say heterogeneity or specific receptors and rarely express cell types. So it's very beneficial also as well with cancers if someone had a brain tumor and we need a sample of it to be able to test for certain biomarkers certain genes on the rna sequence with bulk sequencing they have to take like a big chunk of the brain whereas single cell sequencing only takes a few cells which is really beneficial because you're not going to cut out a whole brain of someone just to look at their genome and biomarkers so single cell sequencing is definitely very applicable and it is also very recent because it was discovered in 2009 i'll link down some sources below if you want to look more into it i don't know i found this super interesting interesting but basically in 2009 our group of scientists used mouse blastromeres to make a sequence transcriptome now if you guys ever heard of something like cryo m or microarrays the difference between single cell sequencing and cryo m is that cryo m needs to freeze the cells whereas single cell sequencing doesn't need to freeze the cells and when you freeze the cells in cryo m it'll probably lead to the protein or the rna being deformed because when you freeze a protein it basically denatures and that's not good because it'll biasly detect individual cells whereas the single cell sequencing can be done more or less at room temperature which makes it really ideal to look at transcriptomes as well as microarrays single cell sequencing is very very specific whereas microarrays aren't as specific microarrays were the thing before single cell sequencing was introduced but ever since single cell sequencing it's been the future for cancer research especially their initial objective with single cell sequencing was to determine if it was more effective than microarrays which it did show to be very very high quality and we can see that through two different techniques whether it be the drop based or the plate based the plate base hasn't been used that much because it is very very expensive but it does show a full length of transcripts and it is very high resolution it's as the name states you look at a cell on a plate whereas the droplet base uses these unique molecular identifiers so umis and microfluidics with oil-based drops we'll get a little bit more into that because that's the one that they did use in 2009 and the one that's been like looked at a lot so the one that was introduced in 2009 was the single cell rna sequencing and it's basically like the mrna quantitative analysis so it's used to find individual cell gene abundances and the drop base is definitely more commonly used because of the cost of it and the efficiency of it because the whole process doesn't take too too long it can take like two a day but usually around 10 hours for the whole process before putting it into a computerized system so how single cell rna sequencing works is they first prepare these barcoded beads through these gel beads and they shoot them through microfluidics with cells and oil Sometimes enzymes can be used to speed up this process, but essentially each cell gets attached to one barcoded bead and then it is clumped in oil so that it is individualized from every other cell. They then run a test, whether it be an RT, PCR, or any kind of analysis test to produce a library sequence. Now RT stands for a reverse transcription test, which is basically taking RNA sequences. And if any of you are familiar with transcription, it's basically taking DNA and the mRNA transcribes it into the complementary sequence. So the reverse transcriptome takes that 
that mRNA and changes it back to the DNA form, so using the complementary base pairing. And it can make many, many copies of this. And it does produce a library sequence along with PCR. So PCR is the polymerase chain reaction and it takes the RNA and is able to duplicate it many, many times to produce a library sequence. So both tests produce a library sequence to either be the reverse transcription or the polymerase chain reaction just in different ways where one takes the mRNA and changes it back to DNA whereas the PCR test duplicates the RNA many times. So now that you have the library sequence, we're able to look at certain parts of library sequence to identify certain genes on the cell. So what we really want to look for are the 10x barcoded beads and the unique molecular identifiers. So the 10x barcoded beads are those known nucleotides these barcoded beads were shot at the start basically they're markers and we mark them at the start of the whole experiment when we put them through the microfluidics with the cell and the oil and then the unique molecular identifiers were produced from that rt or pcr test which produced that library sequence so now that we have the unique molecular identifiers and those barcoded beads that have those known nucleotides on them. It produces a matrix, which is basically this chart with cells in the columns and genes in the rows. So each column is a different cell and then the rows show which genes are on each cell. And the values shown in the charts are those unique molecular identifiers, which we saw from running the RT or the PCR test. And then using computer processing, we're able to make a graph out of this. Usually it'll look like a non-linear scatter plot. We can call this a TISNY plot, which basically stands for T-Distributed Stochastic Neighbor Embedding Plot. And really what it is, is it kind of resembles a non-linear scatter plot. And it's able to group the cells from the matrix into a graph to be visualized. So with the TISNY plot, we're able to group similar cell cultures. So there's dots everywhere and every dot represents a cell. And so we can see the frequencies of each cell with the color code using those unique molecular identifiers. And this is really helpful in defining heterogeneity. So let's say we have two different TISNY plots. We're able to visualize this and see what cells with the genes are more prominent in one RNA sequence versus the other RNA sequence. So we're able to compare between two RNA sequences and compare in the RNA sequencing which cells and which genes are more frequent seen in that RNA transcript. And I think this is really interesting because it is the future for personalized medicine and cancer research. We can potentially find new drug targets from this, being able to look at the expression of RNA sequences and identify those rare cell types because single cell sequencing is very specific and it's able to detect even those rarely expressed cell types, which is really good because it can definitely help us in like the cancer research area. Let's say there's only one specific gene that codes for a certain cancer and it's one of those rare cell types. So single cell sequencing is able to pick up on that rare cell type and say, hey, there's this rarely expressed cell type and be able to show it so that we can see a certain cell on a transcript. We're able to pinpoint that and maybe mark it as a biomarker for cancer and able to use that to further push our understanding of cancers and how they develop, how they replicate and potentially even apply it to personalized medicine. So when we talk about personalized medicine, that's looking at the specific transcriptome of that individual and finding treatments and looking at biomarkers that suit their needs. Let's say we had that brain tumor, we can take a very, very small portion of it and do single cell sequencing to be able to see their, their specific RNA sequence and accommodate to the needs of that patient. And while this is very, very new, they're still doing more tests on it, seeing how far they can push single cell sequencing. It has been pushed into the DNA area, so it can definitely help us in like cancer treatments. I don't know, I just find this so interesting and I think everyone should at least be aware of some of the new technology that we have to combat cancers and develop new treatments and really apply them because this is the future of our world. And in the science world, people are raving these days about the new applications, the new technologies that are coming out, whether it be cryo-M, microarrays, single cell sequencing, CRISPR and ELISA. And maybe I'll talk a little bit more about those. I don't know how interesting you guys are. I know this is just like a Bedworth channel, but I wanted to expand my horizons a little bit and be able to talk about really pertinent ideas from biochemistry because I did recently take this class and I found it so interesting. And since our professor was actually working on a team in cancer research, he's very into this stuff and I was able to ask him questions and be able to learn a lot from the lectures that he gave. Like normally in biochemistry, there's a lot of things you have to memorize, which there was, yes, but he also added an aspect to it, like the applicable aspect. And I found that so 
interesting because he was talking about the new technologies for cancers and personalized medicine. He was talking about literal skincare products like retinol, retinol, and vitamins and stuff. And I just found that so interesting. So maybe I'll make a video on that. I honestly found biochemistry so interesting. If you have this chance, you should definitely take it. Obviously, it'll depend on the professor you get because my professor was really, really good. I've heard some people get very negative experiences from biochemistry, but from the lectures that I was able to attend, I was actually so interested in it. And I want to share that knowledge because I think that everyone should have that chance to learn about the future of our world. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe I should make a series talking about like biochemistry, biology, you know, because it's my major. I'm majoring in bio and minoring in chemistry. I can pick and choose the stuff that I'm interested in. So I'm not going to talk like hours about glycolysis. I will probably talk about more applicable things like skincare and cancer research, but I think it's so interesting and I just wanted to share some knowledge with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. But yeah, I'll also be uploading a little bit more as it's summer as well. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy that video.